What is up, everybody? Good morning. It's Monday. I got my buddy back with me again, finally. Been a couple weeks since we've been together, but we're back out. That sun's right in, right in the way, isn't it? Can we take one more step forward? There yeah, there we go. You lucky people get to see our <laughs> shining faces this morning. <laughs> uh, we've had a fun morning. Um, it's flat calm out here. I mean, glass calm. Um, we left the dock at 6.30, 6.45, give or take, just as it was getting light. Cold this morning. Uh, it was. Uh, we had a good hard frost. Everything on the boat was frozen, the windshield. It was in the high 20s when we left. Uh, water temperature out here today is 44.7. There's one. Come on, come on. Got him. Nice. Got him. Another Walter O'Reilly. I said to my wife the other day, I said, do you know who Walter O'Reilly is? She goes, no. Do you know who Walter O'Reilly is? You remember Radar from, did you ever watch MASH when you were younger? Yeah. Radar's real name was Walter. Not as cool as this Walter though. Big fish like little fish, as my friend Bernie Haney says all the time. There's the little fish, there's the big fish. I don't know how big, I'm gonna say 16 maybe. Yeah. 16 and a half. That's, I think, my third keeper. You've got two? One? Yeah, two. One short, one keeper. Paul caught a big one that was yeah. 21 inches, but something was wrong with it. It was skinny. It sure was. It had a, it had a big, full-size head on it, but a skinny body. It was dark, too. Dark. Yep. Um, next time in, show everybody what you're fishing, too. I've never seen this bait before. Um, oh no, I switched. I switched to a swim bait. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's on your other rod. Yep. I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys in a second. Um, remind me, was the Berkeley Finisher you said? Yes. You bought it at Apps? Yeah, at Apps, yep. Okay. And I believe Apps is reopened. They're open daily in the mornings from... Um, I saw a sign the other day I went by there. They're open in the mornings until ice season during the week because... You know, people are out fishing, even though we don't have ice yet. But um, so go see, go see the guys at Apps, and and they've got a ton of great jigging, uh, jigging spoons, big time. Um, so I we we caught a couple fish on that. That was the Berkeley finisher. I did catch one. Did I catch that smallmouth on a blade this morning? I don't remember. So that's that Berkeley finisher right there. It's a jigging bait. It hangs like this. And I'm assuming it's it's just kind of doing this across the bottom when he's jigging it. A day like today, he's been jigging pretty slow with it because we're not moving. I mean, 0.2, barely. Um, there's just a little bit of a surface breeze. So we've been in three or four different spots here in the West End, but um, and we've caught fish at every spot. A lot of good perch. Um, I bet we've got five walleyes, six maybe now. Yep. Nice size perch. Yep, some nice perch. And I had a I had a pretty good smallmouth first thing this morning. Fat little 18 incher. Um, 18 inches probably fish probably went three pounds, maybe even a touch more. Big fat belly on it. So considering that things aren't the absolute greatest conditions, although it's beautiful out, there's no wind, it hasn't been cold, we've been fishing barehanded all day, um, beautiful sunrise this morning, and it's a gorgeous day, absolutely beautiful day. After the three days of rain, which we desperately needed, I'm not going to complain about Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and even part of yesterday, uh, we have needed the rain, and we still need more, so... Um, I'm not complaining about the rain whatsoever, but it's nice to see the sun again, too. We're in Thanksgiving week. Um, Thanksgiving's Thursday. 
Paul and I were just saying, I've deer hunted three times already this season. I haven't seen squat. I haven't even seen a tail in the woods anyway. So we're, uh, I'm still ever, I don't know if I'll, I might be able to get back out in the woods either Thursday or Friday morning, one of those two days. We'll see. We shall see. I can, there's one. Yep. All of a sudden, oh, big perch. This perch thinks he's a walleye. Because he just, he just freaking, you can see, he just tipped that swim bait. That's the second or third one I've caught on a swim bait today. Oops, sorry. Just splashed you. Um, Bloop. Yeah, suddenly that's the most fish I've caught on one presentation mm -hmm. in in a, probably a month for me. Like I've been, I told Paul this morning, I've been catching fish every trip out. I've been catching, you know, uh, most of my mornings we're playing hooky a little bit longer today. Um, it's nine forty five right now, so we're we're pretty close to being done. And I do have to go to work today, and so do you. Yep. Um, but this is this is the most consistent I've had it in a while, and that's all of a sudden that's four fish, three walleyes, and a perch in a row on the same swim bait. Which the way this season's went for me personally, like that's a that's a hot pattern all of a sudden. You know, I, I feel pretty good about that pretty quickly. Um, I've got sixty percent of a limit here. On that one, on that one bait in the last hour, which is why we're still here because I don't really want to leave now. <laughs> but so I said, water temp forty four, still the same. It's been this, this, it's been in the low low to mid forties now for a couple weeks, and I don't see any sign of that getting any more any colder really anytime soon because the extended forecast for the rest of this week. We have some weather here and there, but overnights the it's not getting down. It's not getting down super cold by any means. Um, matter of fact, the rest of the week I think I only saw one other night where it got down below freezing. So we'll see. I know some of the some of my friends that I'm that I'm friends with in the, in the fishing industry that live out in. Wisconsin, Minnesota. I'm seeing pictures they're putting up already with, with um, some ice on their lakes, especially the guys way up in northern Minnesota. I haven't seen them on the ice yet, but I know that they're taking some pictures of bodies of water that are iced up, so we'll see. One thing about today, though, is everything's been slow. Presentation's been slow. Paul was fishing a bucktail earlier this morning. Super slow. Got bit on it. I'm barely, you can see, if you watch my hand, I'm barely cranking my swim bait. Mm -hmm. It's down on the bottom, and it's just kind of creeping along. Every time I, you know, every five to ten turns of my handle, I stop and let that bait go back and find bottom. A lot of the bites we have haven't been, you know, real heavy bites. They've just been there. Um, that big walleye uh, Paul caught, he lifted up and was, and there was just weight there. And even then, up until we could see it, he's like, I didn't realize that was a fish. He goes, I never felt it shake its head because I thought I had weeds. So I think that's, honestly, I think that's more a case that, it's so still and quiet this morning. There's no, there's no wave action. I don't know. I don't know if I, my theory on that is when it's super flat calm like that, I tend to fish as finesse as possible. And I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but the rougher it gets, the more aggressive I tend to be. 
because I think they're already riled up. That's just how I, that's just my thoughts on it. I don't, again, I don't know if that's real or true, but that's how I think about it. We're probably closing in on last cast though, finally, then we'll do a couple more. Today is one of those days, though, I can tell you, I don't feel like working. <laughs> I can tell you that much. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Like, it wouldn't take much of an act of God to get me to not go to work today. Uh, I could, I could, I could talk my way out of it real easy. It's too nice. Too nice. I can't go. The boss won't let me not come to work today. <laughs> and my boss is an ass, too. He's the worst. So he is the worst. So I really gotta, I really gotta come up with something good to, to get him to let me take that. That's not true. That's such a lie. My boss is the best. He doesn't want to work either. <laughs> He's just as shifty as I am. Oh wait, I am him. And Paul said at the restaurant he's gonna be he's gonna be all by himself on Wednesday because it's a super slow day. So he said anybody around, go in and see him at the restaurant on Friday because there won't be anybody else there. <laughs> I just screwed you right over. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Don't go to don't go there. And I can't say that either. I can't say that either. I can't say don't go. All right, go. He'll take care of you. He always does. Yeah, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't on that one. Yeah. I'd like my I'd like Black Friday to go easy on my buddy, but on the same hand, I'd like him to be I'd like him to be swamped so he has no choice but to make tons of money. Whether you want to or not. <laughs> tons. He's gonna need a dump truck to go to the go to the bank on Saturday morning <laughs> and an armored escort. Sons of bitches! Staff will be there. The crew will be there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I saw recently. I saw a a wonderful glowing uh, review of your place on where Syracuse Eats, mm -hmm. which is a Facebook group that I'm a part of locally. And uh, and as a matter of fact, they were talking about one of our favorites. Your your longtime server Mona. Yeah, Mona's been with me since day one. She's yep. wonderful. And uh, she she waits on us all the time when we go in, and and she's awesome. She knows she knows that menu. She knows that restaurant inside and out. Her dad is a big fan of the channel. He watches the channel all the time. Mona's dad watches yeah. my channel. Yeah. All the time. Ah. Yep. How you? Hi, Mona's dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every time Courtney and I go in, we we. Uh, we're lucky enough to have her as our server most every time, and she's awesome. She is awesome. It makes your restaurant is so homey to begin with, yeah, and it always feels like you're so welcome when you walk in the door. But then your servers are also outstanding, and they really continue that feeling of making everybody feel welcome. And yeah, I'm I'm, I'm humbled to hear that. I'm I'm, I'm really proud of them. Most of them have been with me since day one. And how yeah. long's it? How long's the restaurant been open? March will be nine years. Nine years. What is what is average longevity for a restaurant, in your opinion? Well, most restaurants they say probably most, not that long. No, they say most restaurants fail within the first year. Oh, it's like, it's like at least fifty percent of them. And then about twenty five percent they don't make it to year three. You cross over year five, you're, you're pretty much. I don't want to say it's a home stretch. But you're you're doing. You're pretty dialed in. You're, you're doing it right. right. Yep. So, and then you look at these places, these incredible places like the Dinosaur Barbecue, thirty-six years. Possibilities, thirty-five years. Really. Kitty Hoynes, I think, just hit twenty-five. Hey, and you like Joey's? How many years Joey's has been in business? 
Oh, out in Carrier Circle. Yeah. 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 And Boy, that, I bet you they're going on 40 or 50 that's years. That's right. And you see a lot of the same faces, a lot of the same employees year after year after year. In the grand scheme of things, and I know we're a little off topic this morning, so bear with me. We're going to talk about food for a second. Paul is a is a successful restaurateur in Syracuse uh, at Apisa Regional, for all of you that don't know it. Uh, he's same side of the street, right across the side street from Dinosaur Barbecue in downtown Syracuse. And you're also in the process, you and your partner, of opening a second location. Yeah. I shouldn't say that. You're opening a new restaurant. A new restaurant in Fayetteville. Right in in Fayetteville. Fayetteville. It's not another location of a pizza. Mm -hmm. It is going to be a new standalone on its own. Um, and none of you out there are half as excited as I am <laughs> for the new place. Because I've really had a front row seat to... You know, Paul and I fish almost every week together, and you know we talk about everything business-wise and and stuff. So I've been able to see something that's always fascinated me. The idea of owning a restaurant has always fascinated me. But now I get to watch you go through it from start to finish yeah. and see really how it's done and everything that's involved. It's fascinating. It's fascinating, and and as as we get closer and the time gets nearer, we'll. You know, we'll do something on site. Uh, we'll do a little a preview video and yeah, stuff like fun. that. Um, but that's going to be really exciting. And but on the on the whole, I mean, the Syracuse area. You just named four or five restaurants that are cornerstones of the Syracuse food yeah. scene that have all been here 25, 30 years. You know, we we don't think about it, but everybody that's ever eaten a dinosaur. I don't, I don't know that they stop and think of the history behind it sure. and how long it's been and, and how long it's been so good. Dinosaurs, people say what they want about it, but it's always top quality, and every time you go there, you get that same quality. I can't think of anybody that's ever said to me, oh, I went to Dinosaur and got a terrible meal. It's always good. Um, and yeah, some, of, some of those other places you mentioned, you know, possibilities. Like those are cornerstones of the Syracuse food scene for a reason because they're so good all the time. That's really a that's really something to be said. Yeah, consistency is really a, is a huge part of it, and to keep it consistent and, keep, and focus on that, and, and also have your, your your staff support that as well. Right, buy into that. It's, it's right because it's every it's, night they have to be on their A game. Absolutely, because people could be coming to you for the first time. Or the hundredth time, sure, and they expect that same level of service and quality and food and everything that that they come to expect. And it's any any business that can have that kind sure. of longevity in any industry. John and I had this great vision of what a pizza regionality, you know, is and what it can be, and it's up to them on a daily basis just to keep that vision going, right, and going and going and you know, in, a, in a positive motion. Yep. And they do. They do a fantastic job. I'm absolutely so thrilled and proud of my staff. They really have been incredible. Well, that's a that's a we're only as good as the people that are that are with us, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know, you put a lot more fish today than I have. <laughs> that doesn't always work that way either. I know. It's 10.01. Well, we're already out, so we'll bring this one in and we'll do one more. Okay. We have to talk ourselves into leaving. <laughs> I don't want to. A couple boats out there, too. Yeah. To see. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny. It used to be in the old days that this was today would be opening day of deer season. Mm -hmm. it was the Monday of Thanksgiving week, and in the old days, everybody, you know, the guys, a lot of guys used to take a year in advance. They'd have their vacation this week, um, <coughs> and I was down to I was down at hunting camp on Saturday afternoon. My wife and I went down. 
Um, my cousin called me last week and told me my Uncle Phil had died last Monday morning. Um, thank you. And, and everybody out there, you're going to say thank you and, you know, my condolences and thank you. And that's wonderful. And, and my Uncle Phil was a huge part of my life, especially when I was younger. Um, he also lived an incredible life. He was 90 years old. And um, so we had a little dinner Saturday afternoon, evening, down to hunting camp for him. And, and my cousin and all three of my cousins, all three of his sons were there. And their families and, and some other friends from out of town. And, and, and it was nice. Courtney, my wife, and I went down and spent the afternoon. And some of them I hadn't seen since high school. Uh, when we used to be down to camp every year, uh, it was uh, it was wonderful to get together with everybody, and I want to say thanks to my cousin Chris and for inviting us and and being able to see everybody, and it makes you remember that everybody in your life isn't guaranteed forever, and that there we all have a an end date. Um, and I say that as Thanksgiving is coming this week because a lot of us will get together with family this week that maybe we don't see all the time or, or enough or whatever. And life is life, but if you get a chance to see the people that you're close to this week, be there, be present, be in the now, you know. Um, see if you can find common ground with people that you've had disagreements with before and and remember that it's precious it's short and the time you get to spend with those people make every possible memory you can and make sure that you're there and not wrapped up in six other things that you forget to to spend time with the people you love um my uncle phil will be in my memories as long as i'm alive and being back down to camp and seeing everybody was so wonderful. And and fishing and hunting lends itself to that. You know, the, the people you fish and hunt with are your... Yes, they're already your friends. But when you do these kind of things together, I just think it brings people closer. And, you know, uh, a random fish that all of a sudden gives you a problem at the net, at the boat, and you... And you scoop it while you and your, you know, you and your buddy are yelling, me, "Oh, get it, get it!" Who cares about the fish necessarily? But that memory of, of that interaction, you know, that memory of me and my uncle Phil, sitting down to hunting camp by the by the campfire in the spring during turkey season, and he'd come down because I was the only one that turkey hunted, so he'd come down, and open camp just so him and I could, could spend a couple days together, and and he didn't turkey hunt either. But I'd go out in the morning and hunt till noon and come back and we'd have lunch and go do something else, you know, or work on the camp or, or whatever. And he's gone, but he'll never be forgotten. And so many of those moments, I just think if we cherish them more while they were happening, then certainly when the time comes for the loss of that person, you have much more to to be thankful and happily memory, you know, the happy memories. Um, and like I say, this is Thanksgiving week, so there's going to be a lot of families that that reconnect this week that might have lost touch in the last year. So be mindful and really, really be present for everybody and yourself. No. That sounded like it was in too inland. That might have been a deer hunter. We're right off a three mile bay, so you can hear. We just heard a couple shots. First two of the morning. Well, our little flurry seems to have ended, buddy. Mm -hmm. We've had like three or four more bass casts since. <laughs> Now for the seventeenth last cast. <laughs> Today was another day too, though. I say all the time, you got to make sure when you're fishing these swim baits that you fish them all the way back to the boat because two of those three or four I hit 
another another two feet, you'd have seen them bite it. Sure. Like as soon as you set the hook, you could see the fish flash. Alright everybody, it's got to be a wrap for us for Monday. Happy Thanksgiving everybody. Yeah, I'll see you the rest of the week, Paul won't. Um, like I say, if you want a great dinner Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday, and you don't want turkey anymore, a piece of regional, go see Paul. He'll come, uh, he'll come take care of you. Alright everybody, have a great one. I will see you tomorrow morning. Keep, Keep your, your tip, tip up. up.